All right, we're live. What up, what up, what up? I'm Austin. I'm here with Etta and Carlos. We're doing Build Guild Labs, and we're doing kind of a different way of Build a Guild Labs. We're kind of going to do, instead of deep diving one thing, we're going to build a full project from start to finish uh, over the course of a couple days and uh, or a couple different Build Guild Labs. And I think today we'll be mostly s focusing on the contract, but let's talk about what we're building. So it's a stream uh, contract. Let me just share my screen. Let's see, something like, something like this. There we go. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So uh, Jesse's Hacker House was a cool hacker house at ETH Denver and even ETH Denver last year. And she's done a lot of good ones along the way. Uh, we gave her a grant to have a bigger house. And now we're realizing that some of the folks in the house are awesome and we want to give them some small grants to build some cool things. So we were thinking a really good build for BG Labs would be let's make a website that has kind of like the main central mandate at the top in text, what we want them to do. And then let's have the streams, just like we have Build Guild streams, let's stream to these folks uh, in a way where they can withdraw from it. And we'll talk more about the streams in a bit. But instead of giving them a direct grant, let's put them uh, on streams similar to Build Guild where they withdraw from it. And uh, we want to build all that with Scaffold ETH 2, our new tool of choice. <laughs> Did I cover everything uh, for the intro? What what am I missing here? I think it's good. I think we got a long episode today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got to go fast. We got to speed run it because yeah. it's just like messing around with with some solidity. But okay, so uh, let's let's talk about the stream like psychology for a little bit. I feel like talking about um, the difference between. So first of all, these aren't streams like Superfluid or Llama Pay where it's sending. USD or DAI or some token, not USD. It's sending DAI, but it's sending it regularly and it always sends it, right? In, in these, we want them to fill up and sort of pause so a developer can go do something else and come back and the stream is waiting for them, sort of. Uh, so with these, it's a withdraw pattern. And once you withdraw, it uses some and then it slowly recharges back up. But there's kind of like a whole psychology to the streams. I think maybe, Etta, you could explain that a little bit better. Uh, I can try. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> exactly. So I think that's, it's not like a regular salary kind of method, like the way you get the streams. It's not like on a regular basis. Instead, it's more about, you know, how much time you have and how much you're building. And then, you know, you build something, then you can withdraw from your stream. So it's kind of more flexible, like up to the people right? Depends on how much time the person has, right? Maybe it's the hacker house. So you're building a lot of stuff and then you go to vacation somewhere. So you're like, I'm not building right now. Then you can kind of come back, build something and continue to withdraw from your stream and don't feel the pressure that you're like in a full-time job, but instead it's more, I guess maybe like you can even say it's kind of retroactive funding where you're building something and you know, the stream is there and then you publish that and then you withdraw from your stream. Uh, you can kind of value your own work. Usually like the stream is like limited to a certain amount of um, tokens per month. And then you can say, okay, like this, this tool is worth like 0 0.5. This one is worth like 0 0.7, etc. So it's up to the time like you dedicate and the work you put out there. Um, but yeah, and then it's very flexible format. We're happy to answer, like help out. I know it can be like very different when you first start out. It's like, okay, like what do I do now? Like, how do I even value this? Uh, but it actually turns out to be, you know, once you start, it gets like really easy. And then you have like a certain rate in your mind and no pressure to like constantly deliver. But instead, you know, think of something fun. Or if you have like, you know, a one month challenge where you want to build something every day, you can kind of just take it on. Awesome. Yep. And like, it's tricky. Carlos would even uh, agree to price your work and to figure out how to make it worth your while. And it's one of those games where it seems like the bad actors will win. But I think if you keep good actors on your streams and you pick the right people, then you, you end up in, in a better scenario. Uh, yeah, Carlos, anything to add to that? <laughs> no, no, like it is always weird to, to have to, yeah. like, to to pay yourself, right? You have to rate yeah. your work, but you also have to pay yourself. And that's always weird. It's still weird for me, but yeah. 
So, so yeah, we've really kind of bounced around on the psychology of this, but the solidity of this is actually pretty simple, right? We've, we've stolen some code. I have some laying around over here from some of our other streams, and I'll just kind of bring that into a fresh Scaffold ETH project, and we'll, we'll start messing around with it. And when I say Scaffold ETH, we'll be using Scaffold ETH 2 today, which is kind of the new tool of choice for the Build Guild. It's TypeScript, Next.js, Rainbow Kit, Wagme, uh, all, all the good kind of modern stack. We're, we're using Hardhat uh, in this setup, but we're setting it up to be more flexible soon. I, I used a fancy new NPX command that we're excited about, about and, and we're iterating on. So yes, uh, like check out Scaffold E2. Go, go uh, Carlos, at, go. at some point, uh, that NPX installer is going to prompt you, like, do you want to use Hardhat or Foundry? So you will right. be able to like set up like your own installation or uh, use like the tools that you more, you like the most. Yeah. But for now, okay. it's Hardhat. Okay, so let's get into the smart contract here. Uh, hopefully that's big enough for folks to see. I'll make it really big. <laughs> I think it's good. So uh, we, it, we made it ownable, right? We'll bring in ownable. So there will be an owner to this contract that will be able to kind of like add and remove streams or maybe just add and expand. Maybe we set it so you can't remove, but you can, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out how we want how ownable we want this thing to be. Obviously, if you're building smart contracts at home, it's better when they're not ownable and it just lives forever without an owner and can't be upgraded. Uh, but we will be pretty heavy handedly owning this one, right? Uh, and we're going to track, so we're going to track multiple streams. Uh, with Scaffold E or with the original streams on Build Guild, I'm deploying a new contract each time. And that's a really nice thing because then the funds are there just for you and you can withdraw from them. And, and when you go away, and come back, those funds are still waiting for you. In this case, there's going to be a shared pool. So the game theory is gonna be a little bit different here because the funds are waiting for you, but also other people are also withdrawing from them, right? So th they're sort of waiting for you and your stream is sort of there, but there is like this existential, what if everybody is withdrawing for so long that it that it empties? But you know, new new games we're, we're playing around and testing with and seeing how they work out, right? So. We keep track of a cap and then the last time they pulled, I think. And the last time yes. they pulled would be a date stamp uh, in seconds. And the cap would be the amount in ethers that they're allowed to withdraw within some kind of period. Yeah. And the frequency. I think the frequency is that period. Yeah. Yep. 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 So this, um, this could be something like uh, 0.5 ether. And this could be something like the, the you know a timestamp, and this would be uh, the frequency in which you can withdraw this amount. What what was yeah. that, uh, Etta? You want to jump in? I was just gonna say I think it can be like uh, maybe it can be helpful to like quickly show the build yield streams on the ooh, website. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do just that. Just to give like a visual representation of what it what we're actually trying. Yes, to yes. So a builder uh, has a stream. And there's uh, a certain balance to it. This stream looks completely empty. Sorry, <laughs> Steven Slade. He's, he's, he's done some awesome work, but I think he's kind of retired out of the build guild, but we'll see, maybe he'll be back. Uh, but there's an amount that's unlocked too. So, so the stream is a smart contract that we can go see on Etherscan. Uh, it holds some value. And then over time, the developer is able to withdraw from that stream uh, and they withdraw some amount but they also put in a reason. They talk about what they worked on. Uh, Steven Slade must have worked on a, uh, a PR to make our multi-sig as a service. Uh, looks like he was uh, having multi-sigs be able to import into local storage. So he was creating and adding some new feature to one of our kind of prototypes that's like a forkable product, and he withdrew for some amount. There, there's, there's, and then we can go back and see all of them if we want, but there's lots of builders and their streams. And uh, each one of these is an individual smart contract in this case. But what we'd like to do is have kind of a whole page of streams and have them all coming from this one contract, but a very similar model where they will do a withdraw and withdraw some funds and put in some reason for why they withdrew. And that that green bar that that we are seeing, that's basically the unlocked amount, and that is calculated with this like cap and limit and frequency variables that we are tracking. So we are basically doing like some like math to calculate that unlock 
to 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 know at, at any given moment how much a given builder can withdraw. Exactly. Okay, and we can I can jump over and even see. Should we go look at that calculation? Hopefully, I haven't actually made any changes here. Let's. Oh, oh, oh! Except for that one change where I copy and pasted everything. Oh, <laughs> okay, so you've got your cap. Uh, you've got this frequency in which you can stream that cap, and then we're tracking the last time you pulled. Uh, and then we have all the builders. Uh, basically, we have a mapping it's of mapping. any given address to their struct. So for any given address, we have a stream uh, that we would set up with some add builder stream function that's an only owner. And let's see what happens when we add that builder stream. It creates a new struct with the cap that we set and it sets the last time pulled to the current time minus the frequency. So it actually starts their pulled. stream full. Yep. Yeah. If we, if we just did block stamp, if we did that, then their stream would start empty. So uh, this is a little trick. So basically we deploy the stream and it's already ready and they can withdraw the whole cap if they want right away. Yeah, and we, we could even have like a Boolean on the argument and say like start yeah. empty or, or something yeah. and then check that condition and doing yeah. one thing or another depending on, on that flag. But this is, it's so funny. This is a whole like psychology thing where it's about deploying the stream to the person and having confidence and trust that they'll, you know, use it right away. Basically giving the benefit of the doubt to the person you're deploying the stream to. And that's just been part of our psychology as we've done these streams. So we just kind of do it that way. <laughs> you could definitely have the bully and we could set it up, but uh, yeah. that this is this is the way we've we've decided to do yeah. it, I think. And it works. Okay. It, wor it works like 90, it 95 works. percent of the times yeah. it works. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. And 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 in, and in terms of working, like the contract does exactly what it's supposed to do. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's the person yeah, and the yes. psychology. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we have disclaimer. a couple yeah 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 we have a couple other functions we have this big read function that kind of tells us how much the builder has unlocked so it's basically looking at the builder's stream and it's checking to see uh how long since the last poll compared to now uh compared to the frequency right because if it's greater than the frequency then it's completely full yeah. You know, your, your, your stream is at the cap, but if not, we do this wild calculation here where we're looking at the, the time versus the cap divided by the frequency. Like, so yeah, yeah that, that's the, that's the main math there. And it probably, I probably moved things around a couple times and tinkered with it and scaffold a little bit to make sure it works, but we can go, let's go kind of make sure it works. Right. Let's go try yeah. it out and test it in the front end. You can always go to chat GPT yes exactly okay and then the last thing is this really important function which is stream withdraw and this allows the builder to put in an amount and some reason and pull that money out from the stream uh and and i think that what we're looking at is we're making sure the the amount they can withdraw we look at how much they've unlocked is is uh you know less than or yeah, the count, the amount they can draw has to be greater than or equal to the amount they're asking for. Uh, we look at, uh, what is that? The last, oh yeah, okay. We're just checking to see how, how much they've gone. And then we do that same math there, right? Yeah. Where we do the amount. This is, yeah, this is looking at the total amount they can withdraw plus the time, uh, the extra time, right? And then yeah. we send it to them and then we trigger an event. So it, it's still like some hand wavy math in here, but it's more like, let's go play with it in the front end now that we know kind of what it does and make sure it kind of performs the way we think it will. Does that sound good? Yep. Awesome. All right, let's deploy this thing. That will this, will this deploy? Okay, one other thing I want to look at is this constructor. Oh yes, we do some ownership stuff here, right? Uh, we take in an address in the deploy and we make it the owner. So I think what I want to do is probably pull up my front end here and get my user. Uh oh, do I need the yarn deploy still? Let's see. No, I don't think so. Maybe like uh, I might need to restart refresh that, something. this thing.
There we go. Okay, what we're doing is we're debugging our contracts. Uh, we're looking at this looks the good, owner. but I, the, the owner owners, here, yeah, yeah the is the same as the faucet address, right? Yes. So that's the the hard hat address. What we'd like to do is make this dude the owner. So let's bring him in here and say when we deploy the contract, we'll YOLO this guy's address. And eventually this will be either one of my addresses or Jesse's addresses or maybe even like a multi-sig between multiple people. Maybe me, Jesse, maybe the four of us with Jesse and it's like a two of four or something like that, right? So, so then like not just like one person could come in here and add and remove people's streams. Eventually you kind of back that responsibility off. Okay, here we go. Let's deploy it, ship it. Okay, cool. Now let's go look at it in the front end. It looks like we are the owner. And notice the frequency here. If we go look at the smart contract, we've already adjusted it to a much shorter frequency to help us with debugging. So normally it's set to this, which is 30 days, and we're setting it to 300 seconds. So instead of a month, a whole month will go by in five minutes. So we're allowed to test things. Okay, so uh, let's see. We shouldn't have any builders yet. Uh, I think if we were to uh, let's let's make a builder, right? So incognito. Any any questions? Anything to point out yet? How how are we doing? Everything good? Nope. Dope, dope, dope. Okay, so we made a new builder. This kind of like orange guy here, and we're gonna grab some funds from the faucet. And orange orange guy. Uh, let's stream to Orange Guy, right? Orange Guy's been doing some great stuff for the ecosystem. We, we'd like to get a stream to them. So uh, we put in their address and we put in some cap. We're going to stream them uh, one ETH every five minutes, okay? So this would, be, this would be a lot of ETH in the real world, but if we're saying we're pretending that five minutes is a month, we're going to say one ETH per month, Okay. And let's, can I send that? Do I have everything? It looks like I don't have any money. I need some money for the faucet. I'm just going to get ahead of that warning. And let's send it. There we go. We were able and to. Just wanted to like clarify that those are like burner wallets. So we're not like connecting mm -hmm. to MetaMask if it's someone's like first scaffolded video. Um, so you directly have built in burner wallets. So on an incognito window, it will generate you like a new account. And this is all like test that money too. <laughs> yes. And, awesome and we, show. we do have like a Barnard Wallet video on BG Labs, yeah. I think. So yeah. If you want to learn more about Barnard Wallets, you can like watch that video. And streams too, right? We were talking streams, about stream yeah. psychology yeah. earlier. There's a video about stream psychology and how to join the build guild and what that's all about. Okay, so now we should be able to put orange guy in here and it says, sure enough, like your stream is at a it's a one ETH stream. So that means every five minutes you can withdraw that one ETH. And here's the last time you withdrew, which means it took the deploy time minus the frequency and just filled your stream. So uh, it, should it should be, be fully, fully unlocked, yeah. right? Yep. One, cool. Yep. Okay. So now the stream withdraw needs to happen. And that would be over here. Builder has been doing some cool stuff. Uh, they, they have one ETH in their account. Uh, it's time to withdraw. One one thing I want to do is just uh, show time, right? It's going to be hard to show that the time isn't actually passing right now because we're on localhost and blocks aren't getting mined. We have to do this this little trick here where we go to the faucet and that forces a transaction to happen. And so if you're ever like waiting for some kind of timestamp to happen on localhost and it's not happening, make sure you trigger one of these faucet transactions just to make a transaction happen on your local hard hat node. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how, how it was, but there is like an option, I think, on, on hard Oh, hat. that like yeah. auto mines or something? Yeah, it's like, nice. you know, like, or like yeah. every X seconds is like doing like a block. But yeah, in yeah. this case, you have to create the block yourself. Like in this case, like clicking on the faucet button, for example. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah, click there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, and that what that's doing is making a block over here, right? We have, there's block 12. So, so if you were waiting for a specific timestamp of a specific block, you'd be waiting forever until someone comes along and clicks this and gives you a block that now has that timestamp. So when you're doing timing things locally, you just have to watch out for that. I think long, long winded disclaimer there. Okay. So we've got red, we've got orange guy and orange guy can check their account and say, how much do I have unlocked? Oh, I have a whole ETH. Okay. So now it's time for them to withdraw. 
So they come here and they say, I'm going to withdraw half an ETH for uh, turning in this PR number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. Good work, orange guy on that PR. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that, do dude, this. that number. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, so this is Scaffold ETH. It's built for developers. We, we kind of force you to turn your 0.5 into times 10 to the 18 to go to way so you understand that you're sending way to the smart contract but as we build a ui for this we'll definitely do a better job there and we'll yep. we'll clean that up here we go oh no not enough funds in the contract okay oh, so we didn't yes. fund the contract <laughs> yet okay i'm glad that we added that error there that yep. would have been scarier right okay so uh, let's see, there's no money in the contract. We need to go to the contracts address and go to the faucet and we need to send the contract like 10 ETH, right? Bickety bam. Now this guy should have some ETH. There we go, 10 ETH in there. Okay, so now let's try it again. Hooray. Mm. Okay, so now we wanna know how much this person has unlocked. It's 0.5, right? And if I keep hitting this, it's gonna keep being 0.5. So what we need to do is do this thing where we go grab some money from the faucet and then we come back here and check. Now, oh, it's 0.54. It's going up, right? So it should go up 0.5. No, it should go up in half the time, right? So we only yes. withdrew half the cap. So, yeah, in two and a half minutes or whatever, uh, it's going to be, should be fully back up, right? And we can kind of watch it happen here. Just like go make a transaction and go watch it start to fill back up. Cool. It's working. Yeah. Okay. So the, and, and also like, let's make sure they got the money. You can see that they started with one ETH and now they have one and a half ETH. We can see the contract has 9.5 ETH. Uh, we could add more builders to this, right? But the withdraw seems to be working, but let's test all the cases. Let's make sure like after it gets all the way to the end of the time period, it correctly calculates back to one ETH, right? But pretty much, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. W what we could do is make a new incognito window maybe uh, on this uh, other Chrome and we could go to localhost and we could make another player, right? Purple guy. We can try to withdraw from like without adding the person to show. Ooh, yes. Okay, okay, let's do it. So we've got purple guy here and let's make sure purple guy gets one ETH from the faucet also. And then let's try to withdraw, right? Well, if we they come here and they say, how much is, is unlocked? It's like, wah, wah, yeah, no active stream for builder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's try it. I want to withdraw 0. 0.5 for nothing. <laughs> Send. Uh, no active stream for builder. Okay, cool. So we kind of tested that case. Well, let's get an active stream for this guy. First of all, let's make sure old orange guy is all back to normal now. 0.91. We're almost there. We're almost refreshed. But let's get purple guy a stream too, right? And purple guy is only going to have a 0.5 ETH stream instead of a whole ETH. Uh, oh, yeah, got to hit the button. Of course, even for the admin, we will want to add that in uh, so they have a nice... We, we need to build a better UI in a little bit, but today is about the contract and tinkering with that. Cool. So now this guy has a stream, 0.05, right? Unlocked. And let's go check this dude here, 0.98, almost there, almost back full. I bet it is by now. There it is. Okay, so it's full. It's calculating it uh, correctly. It fills back up, and now uh, it pauses, right? It's paused at one ETH, just waiting for this character to withdraw something new. So I don't know. I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy here. What do you guys think? Uh, do we need to add anything more to the contract? What sh What should we try next? I mean, I'm I'm sure that there is like some missing parts of the contract. For example, like remove builder. Maybe it's a function that we will want to make, like removing Ooh, a builder. Interesting. But yeah. I mean, maybe I mean it's up to you. But maybe we can tinker with the UI a little bit and start like yep. building like a little UI yep. that interacts with this contract with our own UI. Because here on the debug page, we are using like the built-in debug like contract component in a scaffold each two, which is like super convenient because you can just like you can make a change on the contract and then boom, the UI changes. But you usually want to use like a you know your custom fancy UI. So maybe we're gonna start working on that. Maybe just like a little thing and maybe the next day we can like keep building that UI. 
but for now, maybe we can, you know, just have some you know, in little Sounds interaction good. to the contract. Yeah, Sounds good. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's jump over then. I mean, you can see the example UI. It's not going to be happy though, is it? Because we've got a new contract mm -hmm. and some new stuff. So maybe on the homepage. Avoid... Yeah. Maybe this page. Yeah. This this page, right? Yeah. Okay. So if we go to the next JS folder, and we go to Pages and Index, yeah. I think this is the homepage, right? Let's maybe clear some stuff out of here. Like maybe everything except like the first diff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, something like that, right? Let's keep that. That. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, does it save? And auto formats, fantastic. Hello world. Let's start right there, right? What do we get? Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, cool. So first thing we're probably gonna look at is maybe like this builder's stream or maybe yes, how maybe much we they can, have unlocked. Yes, yes. We can check like the unlocked amount for the connected account. Okay. So let's just get his address in there right now, right? Let's let's make sure I can say, you know, who who is actually connected right now. And yeah, it's gonna because it's nothing, right? So what we need to do is we're going to do a it's a const yeah, something. Yeah, it's going to be use accounts, connected. Uh, use account. A, yeah. I think it's a yep. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. like what what me. Yep. Yep. And then kind of come back over here and it's probably going to tell me, yep. Nice. I want the address. Very nice. I don't know why I do that. When I hit save does it oh, it does it anyways. Okay, cool. Yeah. And now we have the a, a connected account, right? And by the way, if you're looking at scaffold ETH, you'll find really nice things like address components. Wait, can I just like hit tap? Oh, I thought yep. I was going to do that. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's do you this. You still get like some right? copilot, oh, yeah. Yeah, some yeah. copilot stuff from scaffold yeah. one. Copilot still, yeah. yeah. It doesn't uh, do, yeah. So it's, it's probably just that, right? And then you get this so. nice, nice address, right? Oh, that looks so good. Okay, so let's get rid of this address. Let's bring this out here so we can just say like, welcome address. There we go. Okay. Nice. And then something like, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have another div. It's like your stream amount, right? Your unlocked stream amount is and we'll put something in here right yeah cool 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 okay so that's the next goal and so we need like a, a wag me read right so we'll do cons it's gonna be something uh use scaffold yes. contract read oh yes. yeah there we go so it's basically then... uh, our custom hooks which are like built on top of uh, wagmis and it gives you like a bunch of uh you know a bunch of magic for you. So I think it's my contract. I do your contract, right? Let's see. You need you uh, need to open the the object, you know, like the curly like, braces. Oh 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 oh! There we go. And that's when it's going to tell me. And then you that's can do like yes yes yep. yes. There we go. Okay, so we we're going to do contract name equals. I think it's called your contract. <laughs> you can do you can do if you if you remove. I mean, you can do like auto completion also if you want. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like yeah, when, here, when you have... and then do function name. Yeah, but also yep. for the function and then... name. Okay. You can do like. So uh... I open this up and I do this yes. right here, right? Yeah, this yes. is really cool. Okay, let's yeah. let's go back and show that off again. Yes. So, so I would do, I would open up these curly braces and hit uh, control space or command space to get the thing I want to put in. And then as I go to put that thing in, I hit it again and it says, Here's the contract. He actually finds my contract, right? Yep. That's really nice. Okay, and then function name. Oh man, it's kind of weird. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, it's like off the end of the page, but we're oh, so it wanted to fill in. It actually filled all this stuff in. Yeah, but, but it's not function, the function yeah. I want, right? So if I do, oh man, this is hard to read. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe you can Let's like get rid have of like all this stuff. New lines. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> oh man uh here we go okay and then we go that and then when i do a control space it's going to tell me what things i want right and i want unlocked yep. builder amount yep and then there are some probably some args that take in the address let's see how does it like that yeah uh missing dog. okay we did it okay and what's coming in here some data probably right and we yep. want to name that 
your unlock stream amount. Yeah, all right. And then we, we're down here and we say your unlock stream amount is that. And what's it going to do? It's going to yell at us about it's a big number. You can't do that. Yeah. I think you actually, if you, if you hover over like your unlock amount, it will tell you that it is like a big number because we also have like types for the I hover over types. this. Yep. Yes. Big number so or undefined. Or undefined. Yep. Yeah. So undefined yep. will be until like it's loading and then it will yep. be like a big number when you get like a response. And this then we're just going to put it into ethers and format it, but it says we don't have ethers. So I need to do, uh, oh man, just do the thing. <laughs> there we go. Import ethers. I'm really, I need to zoom. <laughs> That's probably too far zoomed out though, isn't it? Can you still read that or is it too much? I think it's, it's still, okay. still good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We, we gotta, we gotta have this one. What do we got? Your stream unlocked amount is zero. So have we deployed a stream for this person? I no, I think that's a purple one, which we did not deploy. Yes. To, right? Okay. So we need to add this stream. Oh, wait. Oh, maybe I deploy the new contract here. Let's deploy that again and check it. Oh, wait, maybe I'm talking to an old contract here. Oh no, no, there it is. Yep. Now yeah, it just detected the new stream getting deployed, right? Awesome. Okay, and then so we, well, we probably want to withdraw, right? Do we have time? One last withdraw button. Let's let's make let's make a button. Yeah, a bit more time. I feel like it's it's the thing that we need here is like a little button right here that lets us uh, withdraw maybe something. I don't know. You we'll do I mean, maybe here. we can use like the ether input uh, component that we have. Ooh, I mean, dang. yes, yes, yes. We're, we're, we're doing like kind of two buttons at once, but let's, or we're doing two episodes at once. We're kind of bringing in some front end stuff, but I think it's, it's the obvious next step. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. You're here for so long. Glad you're here. We're, we're doing, we're doing it. Here we go. Withdraw a button. And then it's going to have some kind of like on click, right? Okay. Let's just do, let's do the withdraw without the ether input at first, but then we could totally bring in the ether input. Okay, so on click here, what are we doing? Uh, we're gonna do some action that we need to go make for us, right? Yes. Okay, so we need to go make an action down here. Okay, it'll be an async action that comes from use scaffold contract, right? right. Yes. And this and time you can we'll do, do that like same the same thing. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Open that up. Okay, contract name, your contract, sure. Uh, function name. Don't know what it's called, but I can hit this button and withdraw. stream withdraw. Yeah. And then arguments. Uh, I think there's going to be some args here, right? Let's yeah. see. Does it even tell us here what kind of args it's expecting expecting? It doesn't. Um, does it? Yeah, like if you if you put like two like random like strings or something, it's going okay. to tell you that this like yes. can do like comma test. Yeah. Kind of like this. It's going to say, hey, this needs to be a big number. Yes. Awesome. OK, so this needs to be an amount. We'll do ethers, utils, parse ether 0 0.5. So when you click this, it's going to withdraw 0 0.5. And it's yeah, going to maybe, put in the action, hello yeah. world, this like is Maybe next day, withdraw. we can do like the inputs for this. So yeah. people can select the, their own like you know quantity yeah. and the reason. Yeah. And what's coming in here is the right async, right? And that's the do withdraw, right? And then we can put that do withdraw right in here. Oosker doos. There we go. And we uh, we have a withdraw button that should withdraw all 0.5 from our stream as this guy. Uh, should we try it? Yeah. What? It just worked. Yes. Stream, is, stream is there. Now, now let's watch over here. Uh, I'm going to keep doing some faucet actions, and we should see the stream start to refill again. So another thing, challenge for next week would be a nice, like, beautiful, like, like, loading bar here that like shows like some goo loading up as you as your stream refills, right? Yeah. So this, so we built a simple contract, and then we built a simple input after kind of like debugging it with the debug stuff. We built a little bit of our own uh, uh, UI, but I think we'll save building a complex UI for the next episode. And we'll get into that again on another episode of Build Guild Labs. Yes. And one thing to add to the next day to do 
is just like removing that weird space that we have. I and mean, we have like some weird space <laughs> this... going on in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> this is not a professional um, UI. Like, like everything, everything is, is everything is great, but that you know, I, I'm looking at that and I'm, my brain is starting to do like some. I can't. I can't handle that. So, oh, it's a good note not to end even on. Do it right. like, I think it's like it's the flex. I, th I think yeah. it's the flex. You know, like, but I mean, it's fine. I mean, I can live with it until next week. But I'm just deleting. <laughs> How's that? That's better. I like this better. That's way <laughs> worse. <laughs> Can we get it back again? <laughs> I can't. There we go. That one. There we go. Yeah, yeah. And our stream is almost full again. Uh, if I keep hitting this, we'll see that this. Oh, not a, not almost full again, but it's getting there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, great, great, great episode. Thanks for building with us. Uh, I'm going to take us back to this view. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Happy Build Guild Build, Build Guild Labs. Thanks for being here. Uh, any closing words? No, like, thank you for staying with us like so long. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and yeah, stay tuned. Like next week is going to be even better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to that front end. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you.